okay. Hello. So, hello. My name is Madison. I am going to be going through every single pattern for the 2021 Minnesota State 4-H Horse Show. Um, this is the first video I'm doing, which is showmanship. And I am going to do all of the showmanships in, their, in order here. So I'll start with the six through nine, then the 10 plus, the English, and lastly, the grand champion one. Um, and so you can read who I am. Uh, but let's get into what's actually important, which is the patterns. So first, whenever you look at a pattern, there's four things that you should always look for. So first is what is the judge going to look for? So like what are the things that are going to be easy and difficult? And in that, what is going to be easy and difficult for you and your horse? So what might be easy for you could be more difficult for someone else. And you know, just knowing you and your horse. Where do I need to be? is very important. So always thinking about at this point in my pattern, where do I need to be looking? Where do I need to be going? And how am I setting myself and my horse up for success by doing these other things? Particularly number three is how you plan ahead. Um, and then a checklist before you even go to the warm-up pen. So once you, you know, get your horse out, you've washed them, cleaned them, they're banded and their mane is contained, you know, make their feet look nice, clean off all the dirt and whatnot, you're dressed, have everything you need. Always take fly spray, a brush, I prefer like a smaller, like soft brush, that way if I need to touch up their face or something, I can. If you have a fake tail, I would recommend bringing like a comb of some sort, or you can use a stiff bristle brush to kind of fluff the tail up. Um, and then a rag, like just a towel or something to wipe off your boots if you go warm up and then you come out. Um, hopefully it's not raining. If it is, obviously take like a raincoat. If you're going to wear a hat and it's raining, keep it in the hat box until you literally go in because rain will destroy your hats. Um, so all your tacking equipment and most important is your number. I can't tell you how many times I have seen someone ready to go in and then they're like, oh no, my number's back at the stall and they go sprinting back. So make sure you have those things. So. How is showmanship run? I figured I would include this for showmanship because it is totally different than all the other classes. So what they do is they run two grades at the same time using half of the egg star. It's not called the egg star anymore. When I was there, it was called the egg star. Now it is just the small enclosed arena next to the horse barn and the restrooms. That's kind of like on your way to go to all the campers in the outdoor pen. You'll, you'll know what pen it is. They also have training in there and trail. Um, so they typically um, start with grades 13 and 12, and they have one on one half and the other on the other half. So like, for example, grade 13 would be on the green side, a grade 12 would be on the blue side. And then they continue with all of the odds on the same side as where grade 13 would be and all the evens on the same side as where grade 12 would be. So that means that it moves a lot faster than all the rest of the pattern classes because you have essentially two arenas going at the same time. So if you are hypothetically in grade eight and you know you're going to be on the side that has grade 12 running in it, you are going to follow grade 10 on that half of the arena. So make sure you know which side you're going to be on and make sure you pay attention, especially with the order of goes, your number distinct like says where you're gonna go. So if you're number 10, you will go before number 100. So make sure you know that. Um, 
Yeah, so then what they'll normally have you do, depending on how the pattern is set up, there's a little door over here that like you'll come in. There's a big door over here and a big door on the side. You'll come in, do your pattern, and then they normally have you go out this little side door or they, depending on how this pattern is, they'll have you exit out the same door you come in. Um, so just follow the directions of the ring stored. If you can, watch a grade up before or like someone before you. Um, to see how they ask them to exit so you know ahead of time so you're not like done and wondering where do I go so that is how showmanship is run so yay we get to the exciting bit so actually talking about the patterns now you will notice on every well basically every single pattern once I get into like the horsemanship and the equitation stuff I drew a fair bit on those showmanship some of them I drew a lot on some of them I didn't draw a lot but either way for the Western Showmanship grades 6 through 9, the directions I retyped over here. And on the patterns, if it gives me a distinction of like a distance that is up to my judgment, um, I highlight that. And if it also says like a horse length, uh, I'll also discuss what that actually means. And then for pivoting, I highlighted those so you know, hey, this is how much of a pivot I should expect. So for this pattern, uh, I'm going to just go through with my pointer and read everything and then we'll get into the more nitty gritty. So you're going to start at cone A. You're going to be on the side. Your horse's nose should be even with the cone. You'll get acknowledgement from the ring steward or judge uh, who will be here. They'll nod to you. You're going to go at a walk halfway to A. You are going to jog until you're even with the judge. You are going to back approximately two horse lengths for form a 180 pivot. You are then going to trot two and around A and halfway to the judge. Then you are going to walk to the judge, stop and set up for inspection. The judge will walk around you and do inspection. When you're dismissed, you'll do a 90 and walk away from the judge to the exit. So when I look at this pattern, the main thing that I think will increase your scores is having a definite halfway point in your pattern as well as making sure that obviously, you know, your pivots are pivots and your back is straight. And when you ask your horse to come up to the trot with you, they do it right away. You're not like waiting for them. You're not looking at them. They just step up and go into the trot with you as you go off. So the main thing that you should do is before your class, before or before your go, unless you're the very first like three people, in which case for your grade, um, good luck. I know how it goes. Sometimes going first is a good thing though. So I would think that they would have you enter here and then they'd probably have you walk around behind to get to the exit door out here rather than have you, you walk along the rail. Depends on what they'll have you do. Either way, you're going to start with your horse's nose even at the cone. You're going to stay on the leading side. You're not going to move over here because then you're in the same quadrant as the judge would be. You're going to stay over here. You'll get acknowledgement from them. Step up to a walk. And before your pattern, you should go and figure out what is halfway between A and the judge. And you can do that pretty easily because your bleachers are either going to be here or they're going to be here. So you should be able to go up into the bleachers and quietly discreetly, of course, um, just walk from A to the judge and count how many steps that is. Divide that by two, and that's how many steps you should take here. And what you can also do is once you figure that out, you can start again where A is, take that many steps, turn and look into the arena and see if there's a poster. Is there a post? Is there something with the bleachers? you know, find some sort of marker that you can look at or just see out of the corner of your eye and say, okay, this is halfway for this bit here. So you figured out your halfway point. That's fantastic. 
Something else I think that a lot of people will make more difficult for themselves is this curve because you're going to get down here to A and you're going to be going like out of the arena, right? Like you're headed away from the judge. And I think a lot of younger people that don't have as much show experience will not necessarily panic, but they'll get here and they'll be like, oh my gosh, I need to go back to the judge. And they'll make this turn like really short and they're not going to come over here where they're in line with the judge. So make sure that when you're here, you're looking kind of up here. I like to use where if I'm on a circle or a curve, I like to look a quarter of that circle ahead of me. So if I'm here, I'm looking about here. And if I'm here, I'm looking about here. And in, you know, once you're here, you should be looking at your judge and finishing your curve. So making sure that this is a good size um, and you're not cutting this too short. You also though, and why I mentioned looking where you're going is you also don't want to like come over here, turn too sharply and then be like, oh no, I've turned too sharp. So then you have to come over here and then sometimes that will happen too. So practice in the warm up pen, making a circle and like finding a spot to look at and then going straight towards it. Um, probably the last major thing, um, that I would say is making sure that your stop here is even with the judge and the horse's nose should be even with the judge when you stop. So make sure that when you're practicing, have, you know, a friend, a parent, a grandparent, I don't know, a dog, uh, double check. So when you stop, you know, you can do it yourself too. pick a post or a cone or something. And when you stop, look and just make sure that you're even and in line with them. Um, but besides that, you know, just make sure your back is straight. So when it says, that brings me back to um, two horse lengths. So a horse length ideally is four steps. If your back is going really, really bad, treat a horse length as three steps. If your back is going really, really well, it's crisp, it's straight, you know, they're just marching back away from you, then you can maybe get away with five. So two horse lengths, if it's going really bad, you can do six. Ideally, do eight. If it's going really, really well, you can probably push it to nine. I don't know if I would go all the way to 10 because then, you know, the judge is like, did they actually back two? Um, so yeah, ideally eight steps backwards. Um, I think that is everything I have for the 639 showmanship. Um, yeah, good luck to everyone showing in the 639 and have fun because that's the most important part. Yay, now we are to the 10 and up showmanship. So you're gonna start at cone A. Uh, you're going to, I'll explain this bit, but I'm just going to go through the entire pattern first and then I'll explain why I have this weird shape here. You're gonna start at A. You are going to trot, stop, and hesitate. Trot a curve. You are then going to walk to the judge. Stop, back, stop, and set up. You're gonna do your inspection. When, wait, I read that wrong. Okay, start over. Start at A, trot, stop, and hesitate. Trot the curve, walk to judge. Back two horse lengths. You're going to walk up to the judge again. Stop, set up, then do inspection. I would, <laughs> obviously, me even reading it, uh, messed it up. So I would practice doing this whole little thing. So you in your brain are like, okay, I'm going to come up to the judge, back, come up to the judge again then do inspection, um, just so that way you're not forgetting to do that back. So walk up judge, you're doing the inspection. When you're dismissed, you're going to do a one and a half turn. So you're going to be facing this way. You're going to trot to B, which is down here. Stop, set up and acknowledge the judge. And then you're going to walk to the exit. So I think this pattern is really interesting because 
maybe they had it in the Champion Champions in 2019. I would have to double check, but I don't remember necessarily having a 4-H pattern that had this stop and hesitate bit, let alone two times. Um, so what they want with the whole stop and hesitate or the stop and acknowledging the judge is in the hesitate case, this first one, you're going to pick up the trot, stop, you are not going to turn towards your horse. You're going to just stay facing forward as though you were continuing. Stop. The hesitate should be like a breath. So take a deep breath, exhale, and then continue. They don't want you to stop and turn towards the horse. They don't want you to set up for the hesitate. They just literally want you to come to a stop, pause for a sec, and then go again. This one at B, you're going to treat more so um, like you would coming up to the judge for inspection. So you're going to stop at B, you're going to turn towards your horse, set them up, go like you would um, stand for inspection, look at the judge or the ring steward, and once they nod to you or, you know, look at you, you make eye contact, then you would continue and walk ahead. <clears throat> so. Being ready at A, horse's nose is even with A, you should be on the off side of the horse, not the leading side, because we know our quarter system. You're going to have the judge or the ring steward nod to you. You're going to move back to your leading side, pick up the trot right away. Halfway is where this marker is. They don't necessarily tell you but it's halfway. They, they uh, like to do that. I'll mention that here too. So you're going to go halfway and stop, do your hesitate, pause for a second. You're going to pick up the trot again and make a curve. I was kind of thinking about how I would handle this because a small part of me kind of wants to make it more like a square corner. And depending on how small they set this up, you might have to think of it a little bit more like a square corner than you would a curve. Um, so I would do, if you are comfortable with square corners, I would make it a little bit sharper of a curve and try and keep this straight a little bit longer. But you definitely don't want to like do your hesitate and immediately turn here. Like you want to go straight a little bit further. I would do another probably depending on how big they set it up. Um, two to three strides, so like six to eight human running steps, and then, you know, assess where you are. Once you finish your curve, halfway between A and the judge, approximately, is where they're going to have you break from the trot to the walk. Again, they don't say that, but that's how it's drawn. So that's where I would put it, is that halfway point. You're going to break to the walk. Make sure that your walk is like lively, like look like you're going somewhere. Um, don't be like power walking so much that your horse is going to break into the jog, but don't look like you're dead while you're walking. So you're going to walk to the judge, stop, turn towards your horse back, um, two horse lengths. I talked about this with the six through nine. If your back is going well, um, two horse lengths is eight, nine, maybe 10 steps. If it's straight, they're you know not um, overly bending their neck and they're just marching back away from you. If the back is going poorly, they are fighting with you about it. They raise their head a bunch. They are crooked. Um, Two horse lengths can be six steps if it's going bad. Ideally, eight. So you're going to do your back. You're going to walk back up to the judge. Stop. Set up for inspection. They're going to walk around you. I will tell you that um, however the ring steward walks for one person, they're going to have to walk for everybody. So if you aren't the first person, you should watch the first person or two ahead of you and see which way the judge the person walks around and they're going to go that way for you. So remember your quarter system, 
shoulders and tail is where you cross over. Do not cross over until the judge is stopped and tells you that you may complete your pattern. You want to wait for that. You don't want to just, as soon as they get back to their spot, cross over right away. Okay, so we've done inspection. When dismissed, you're going to uh, do a one and a half turn. So make sure for that then, that when you walk back up after your back, that you leave um, enough space between you and the ring steward that when you, you know, ideally you would step in and walk towards your horse's nose, um, that you're not going to run into the judge when you're doing your pivot. So just make sure that you have um, a reasonable distance, practice with a friend, practice with a post on somewhere, you know, make sure that that works well. Um, then you're going to trot to B, and you're probably thinking, why do you have this hideous green um, D shape here? Well, that's because I really didn't like the curve that they gave me. <laughs> so I like to think of everything as like a straight line or a curve. And this is kind of very oval egg shaped, and I don't really like that. So personally, what I would do is I would go straight a little bit longer, then do, then do my curve, and then have this be straight. Because you don't want to come in um, here, because how they have it drawn is you basically come in here, and you maybe have like two steps to get your horse straight for this stop, versus if you go on the path of the green that I have, you have all this time to make sure you and your horse are straight when you come into your stop here. So when you do your curve, look ahead where you're going. Um, I mean, don't like when you're here, be looking down here, but like look about a quarter of your circle ahead of you. You're going to stop. So then you're basically going to treat it as you did when you were at the judge. You're going to stop, turn towards your horse, set up, you know, be ready presenting them. Once you are set up, you're going to look at the steward or the judge that walked around you. Once they nod or acknowledge you, again, watch people in front of you, see exactly how they do that. I imagine they'll nod. Um, then after that, just turn and walk straight out. Again, make sure this walk is not dead because they can still judge you um, while you're doing this little walk bit here. So always, always, always in the show pen. Don't, um, like even if something goes bad, keep showing because you never know. Maybe everyone has a really fresh horse. Maybe every horse slides their pivot foot. You never know. Um, so warming up for this pattern, I would take my horse and do a lot of, um, transitions. So like, from a walk to a trot, from a trot to a stop, and like doing a bunch of different transitions. That way, making sure that when you stop, they're fine with you staying facing forward and just waiting with them. Sometimes they get a little bit like, why aren't we still going if you're facing forward? So do that a couple times with them. Make sure your setup is quick, like remind them, hey, we need to have a quick setup. You only have one, pat, uh, one pivot here, so make sure your pivot is good. Um, and making sure that they're back, they keep their body straight and you are backing them straight. I believe that is all I have for grade 10 Western showmanship. Thank you and good luck to everyone down at state. We are now looking at the English showmanship pattern. So compared to the other three patterns, um, the English showmanship I feel personally is by far the easiest of them. Um, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't still warm up and, you know, practice it a couple times before. Um, so first, the nice thing they do is they give you cones exactly where you need to do stuff. So be ready at your first cone. You should set your horse up and be on this side of your horse, not the leading side, the opposite side. So you are in the correct quarter quadrant system uh, for the quarter system with your horse. Once the judge acknowledges you, you're going to move back to the other side. You're going to walk A to B. 
Once you get to B, you're going to ask them to trot. Depending on where the judge is in relation to cone C, will determine how um, tight this corner needs to be from how it's drawn and how they normally do stuff at state. This is probably going to be a fairly sharp corner. So what I would do to kind of counteract that is rather than starting right next to the cone, if there's room, I would start about, you know, a horse length off of the cone. So that way when I make this turn, I have more room here. You're going to keep trotting, stop at the judge, set up for inspection. Once you're dismissed, you're going to back one horse length. If the back is going really well, do four or five steps. If it's not going well, do three or four. And by going well, I mean if it's straight and they're not, you know, getting upset and tossing their head. And if it's a fairly, you know, good, quick back. You've completed your back. At that point, you're going to do a 270. So you're going to be facing the same direction, essentially, that you came in from. Then it tells you to walk. So this is going to be a really long walk, right? So make sure that when you're doing your walk, it's a brisk walk, but not so brisk and quick that your horse breaks into the trot. Because if you're in a hurry, like, oh my gosh, we're done, I can get out now, and your horse breaks to the trot here, that's going to be a fault. It's going to be points off. So you want to make sure that this is a walk. Um, so it, like I like to tell people is imagine you just walked into a brand new store that you've never been in before and you look at the price tag and you're like, hmm, I need to leave. So you <laughs> like you want to leave the store, but you also don't want to like run out of the store. So like that kind of walk. I don't know if that helps anyone. That's how I think about it. So you're going to walk and basically once you're even with A, you're done. So there's going to be a big double door here that they'll have you go in and out of. So they'll probably have cones splitting the entrance and exit. Make, sh make sure that you um, uh, don't like interfere with the people coming in. Oh, and the other thing too, once you do your turn, pick something down here and stare at that. Like stare a hole into the wall and walk directly straight towards it. Don't get like a squiggly walk while you're doing stuff. Just a nice straight walk. I believe that is everything I have for the English showmanship. Congratulations on making it to state and good luck to everyone competing.